I got those up, two, three, four Occupation G.I. Blue up, two, three, four, up, two, three, four, From my G.I. head to the heels of my G.I. shoe And if I don't go stateside soon I'm gonna blow my fuse Hi guys, bringing you another episode of Fallout for Real. As you'll have seen from my videos, I'm quite an interest in the Cold War, and I've been recently getting into the Fallout series of video games. I thought I'd do a video series on sort of military technology and proposed designs uh, that in the real world that actually kind of parallel those that were developed in the Fallout universe. So today we're going to be looking at mini nukes. Now, the mini nuke and its associated uh, launchers are perhaps some more irreverent weapons in Fallout, uh, almost shorthand for how nuke happy the United States of the Fallout universe have become just before the outbreak of the Great War, which is of course an exaggeration of the immediate post World War II period when nuclear power was being uh, heralded as the solution to everything, and tactical nuclear warfare was seen as uh, legitimate, winnable, and nuclear technology was being applied to all sorts of weapon systems. Um, it's not surprising uh, that the US did start on the road to miniaturised nuclear weapons in the real world and even to uh, deploy them as an organic infantry support weapon, uh, which culminated in the M388 Davy Crockett, which is undoubtedly part of the inspiration behind the Fallout mini-nukes. The Davy Crockett was a weapon system based around either the uh, 120mm M28 or 155mm M29 recoilless rifle, firing a W-54 atomic warhead. The rifle could be carried on and fired from a jeep or armoured personnel carrier, but could also be fired from a tripod on the ground, and in theory at least, uh, that was light enough to be carried by the crew of three. The W-54 warhead was at about the limit in terms of scaling down a conventional fission warhead. Essentially it's close to the minimum practical size, uh, whilst maintaining a critical mass of conventional fissile material. Uh, the yield was between 10 and 20 tonnes of TNT for the rifle launched W-54. Uh, other versions had variable yield up to about one kiloton. Um, such a high yield would have been suicidal with the Davy Crockett. Uh, it only had a range of between one, one and a quarter and two and a half miles, depending upon the recoilless rifle being used to fire it. The warhead was also intended for use in the nuclear demolition charges, uh, which were colloquially known as backpack nukes. Uh, and the higher yield would be practical in, in this application. So the Davy Crockett system is small, but not as small as a Fallout Mini Nuke. So is the Fallout Mini Nuke even possible? Yes, if you used uh, exotic fissile materials with a very low critical mass, uh, it could be done. Um, it could be made smaller. Uh, is it practical, however? In reality, no. Uh, even with the range of the Davy Crockett, there would be legitimate concerns regarding fairly immediate exposure to radioactive fallout in the aftermath of firing, uh, especially if the wind was blowing towards the firing crew. Indeed, the main killing power of such a weapon was identified as the initial lethal radiation burst, which actually extends out beyond the explosive blast radius. So, with its much shorter range, if using a fallout mini nuke in the real world didn't kill you with blast, it would irradiate you. Uh, still, the Davy Crockett was real. It was deployed from the early 60s until at least 1971, uh, and it was seen as a key weapon in blunting any Soviet advance in Europe, a uh, way of overcoming Soviet numerical superiority. And it's about as close as you're going to get to a true man-portable nuke launcher, uh, a real atomic equaliser for the infantryman. So I hope you found that interesting. And until next time, bye for now. Occupation G, I'm blue. Occupation G, I'm blue.